Well, coming in autumn 2022, and this has been teased for so many years, we're getting so excited about this, The Rings of Power, the new prequel TV series to Lord of the Rings, coming to Amazon in autumn 2022. Pascal, let's watch the trailer. Haven't you ever wondered what else is out there? There's wonders in this world beyond our wandering. I can feel it. Oh my goodness, my goodness. Doesn't this look good? I think, haven't they said that this will be the most expensive TV series of all time? More expensive than Game of Thrones, obviously. Well, according to the press releases, um, Amazon have gone for five seasons. So we're going to have, you know, five wow. series uh, of the Rings. Interesting, we can discuss whether or not they're all going to be called Rings of Power. But the figure that's been mentioned is to the tune of 200 million dollars per season wow. times five it's a billion so yeah, yeah this is allegedly the most expensive tv series ever until maybe the next one but also i would argue the most anticipated one because fans i've heard about we've had the murmurs literally the whispers of this happening in 2017 18 yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, a billion pounds, although I suppose that's just fiddling small change for Jeff Bezos, isn't it? But that is a staggering amount of money. So I can detect from your reaction that you're looking forward to going back to Middle Earth? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, Pascal, we just talked about before the 40th anniversary of some of the the, the music that I grew up with. I, I can't believe that it's it's over 20 years now since the first of the Lord of the Rings films was released. And, and like you, I frequently go back to and watch those films again. And, and, and every time I watch them, marvel at the special effects, marvel at the landscapes. I mean, the landscapes were just incredible on their own weren't they and so to yes to get back there and to see it all again brought up to date but new intriguing storylines really can't wait for this you're absolutely right for me the, the landscape which um interestingly lord of the rings was reviewed as part of film marketing in one of the early episodes is almost like a, another character as part of mm. what we do i watch lord of the rings once a year as, as you know and every time you just get caught up in the story the emotions and so on and therefore what i'm hoping and there's no reason to doubt that, that wouldn't be the case that we're going to be transported again with new characters new stories now the one thing that is interesting and that might be a tougher watch for non-fans i would say this takes place thousands of years before the hobbit and the lord of the rings yeah and this is this is an interesting thing isn't it and, and, and again it, they're gonna have to get the balance absolutely right here because yes they want to please fans like us who know the characters of lord of the rings and have read the books and watched the films many 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 times but they also have to entice in the casual viewer now i i know at the same time that there is going to be a game of thrones prequel type series set many hundreds of years before the uh, timeline of the Game of Thrones series that we all watched over the last decade. And the danger, I guess, is that they ha they put too many references into the story to keep fans like you and I happy, that it alienates the potential new audience. And let's face it, a story set thousands of years before the events of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings actually probably doesn't need to have that many references to the story that we we all know and love. You know, the ring might be in there somehow, the forging of the ring or, or that sort of thing. But I guess they've just got to get that balance right. For now, all we can do is speculate, as people have done mm. for a very, very long time. As we move on to talking about the marketing campaign, 
I'm going to literally put to you that this is an example of the art of the intrigue and anticipation. And this mm. could be, uh, in jest, you know, the word of mouth marketing campaign of all marketing campaigns, because mm. interestingly, compared to maybe all the studios or all the franchises we and I have discussed, it's been so controlled, but in a good way that um, it's been left to the fans and more to do the marketing for, you know, Amazon Prime. So it all began on the 13th of February 2019. I mean, literally 2019 is that long ago. And the Lord of the Rings on Prime, L O T R on Prime, just become almost like the uh, the, the hashtag and, and the the name for all the accounts they have on social media. Uh, they released just one quote from J R R Tolkien: "I wisely started with a map." That's <laughs> geniusly simple, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and if you're the fan, you know that J R R Tolkien's. Um, way of working was always to draw the map first almost like having a plan a storyboard and then look at the characters and the trial and tribulation and then two days later on the 15th of february 2019 of course a map of middle earth but that was looked like it was torn and tatty perhaps it'd been used by some of our heroes was released on the amazon.com uh, website and you could go in you could scan you could print you could download there was not much in terms of interactivity but that was enough to begin this process of of the fans and more discussing what all would be included and not. I mean, again, the map is such an integral part of the of the Lord of the Rings ethos mythos, isn't it? We us fans just recognise all of those locations. We know where the Lonely Mountain is. We know where the Mirkwood is, and we know where the Shire is. It, it's just it's just like a real place, isn't it? Even though it's fiction. I mean, I reckon I know this map more than I do even where I live in, in real life. <laughs> I studied yeah. it so many times. I used to play the role-playing game in my younger days. I played the video game. I read the books. I've got them. I had the map once as a um, – I still have it as a Christmas present from Denise. So, yeah, you're right. And it's also the calligraphy. It's the way which the mountains are represented and the um, – and, and the trees and so on. It's it's a language. Now, we had to wait a bit longer, and it was until the the end of July 2019 that the um, production team released a feature video. And what I liked about it, Roger, which I know you did as well, it was almost like a vlog style. So it wasn't particularly polished and promotional in nature. It was more someone had taken lots of different scenes on the mobile phone, and this had been pulled together. And what they were doing using text and that very unique calligraphy that is linked to the world of J.R.R. Tolkien, they were highlighting the credentials of the team members, which films they worked on or which costume they made. They also... Make sure that people knew that uh, illustrator John Howe has been working with the Jacksons on the others was also part of that um, kind of um, think tank to to get it right. And it feels to me that they were already doing quite a bit to try and reassure the fans that they were not going to mess this up. Yeah, and again, I, I can't get my head around the fact that this featurette was released nearly three years ago. I mean, the... the uh, such a massive production obviously has taken time and it undoubtedly will have been affected by the pandemic. But you are right. This is intrigue, creating that intrigue over such a long period. You know, it, it's incredible. They started so long ago. For me, this is now becoming an example I share with my customers. So case in point, only yesterday, somebody said to me, I, I would like to do a promotional video for my business, but I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to talk on camera. It's not for me and so on and so forth. And literally, because I've done the research, I went, I tell you what, let me show you something. So mm. uh, I, we watched this video called Eat Our Fellowship. And I said, so there's no voice. No one's talking to camera. It's uh, scenes animated to text and music and in the space of one minute 45 seconds you can say everything that is to say about the business and they absolutely loved it plus they were they were delighted to to, to know more about you know the Lord of the Rings TV series now to your point about time and space it took about two years for the next big marketing push and in between those two years we had regular press releases of course by the casting the locations and so on there was even 
reference to, oh, look at this, we finished season one in New Zealand, we're going to do season two in the UK, which created also a news report. They also took the trouble to celebrate um, Tolkien um, Reading Day, which is on 25th of March every year. So they were still the essential, but nothing major, until two years later, almost, on the 2nd of August 2021, the first image, literally just an image, was released to the internet and to the fan base. And what a beautiful image that is. I mean, it's obviously a photograph, but it almost could be a painting. Um, again, it has that incredible landscape that we've talked about before, staggering mountains, but glorious green um, pastures in the front, great sunset. It's a beautiful, beautiful image. And again, to me, it looks it looks like it was part it's part of the Lord of the Rings mythos straight away. It's got that look and feel that the Peter Jackson films had straight away. So that consistency on the hopefully that continuity will be there in the imagery. I believe it was a painting when I first saw it, Roger, to your point. Yeah. And, and interestingly, um, that led to, I mean, I th when I say thousands, I am not overstating it. Thousands of reaction videos, thousands of blog articles and podcasts about just one image which is incredible mm. and what they do very cleverly i think by the production team the marketing team is that they waited 24 hours and then they officially confirmed that this was a still a real image from episode one season one so they let <laughs> the, the fan base and more and the, the media kind of speculate and then they don't leave you just hanging 24 hours later they say yeah you're right and it's from episode one, season one however we still don't have the name and the title of this series. Yeah, everybody's on the edge of the seat saying, come on, come on, come on, tell us more, tell us more. Do you have to wait for the 19th of January 2022? So it's a long time from the th August 2021 to uh, 2022. And they release what they call the title announcement video, which you and I, <laughs> Richard, and all the others, we went absolutely crazy on, on Messenger. Have you seen it yet? Um, I have never seen or maybe I'm forgetting, but I don't remember seeing such a dramatic uh, kind of uh, effort with regard to just announcing the title of a series. I can't think of it ever happening before. I'm sure it has, but again, it's just the name of the series. That That's not that remarkable, is it? Well, of course it is. And again, an amazing example of just creating that tension and that longing that people have to see this. So, of course, people are reacting to actually how beautiful, once again, this title announcement video is. Very dramatic, and actually, but also reacting to the name, The Rings of Power. And certainly, mm. oh, the relief that we are going to be looking at this era in the whole kind of saga of the creation of the rings for the different races. And, of course, the one ring that would be won by Sauron. And mm. what I thought was interesting, and as a learning point for all of us, so they had a very visual um, title announcement, they also had a text-only version on social media, which I thought was interesting. And the text-only version it literally is revealing the title in multiple language, you know, French, mm -hmm. Spanish, Japanese, um, Norwegian, and so on. But of course, because it is Lord of the Rings, the final version is Elvish. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and again, it's got that re immediately recognizable style that we all know. Do you know, it's a style that I remember when I used to buy the role-playing games, you could buy, you had the box set, which was the, the starter pack, but then you would buy the different adventures in, in Lori and the Moria and so on. And it was always the calligraphy and the dramatic image on the front cover of that adventure pack that used to suck me in. So we don't have to wait much longer. I, I'm pleased to, to know that on the 3rd of February, they begin with part one, or what I'm going to call the character posters campaign. And what they've done very cleverly, Roger, and I, you and I discussed it in the green room. So they are, I mean, one of the drawbacks, I suppose, sometimes the internet is that the spoilers that you can't control, such as IMDb, revealing um, actors and casting before you've done anything else. So they went ahead and revealed that there would be, altogether for season one, 23 main characters. Each character has a poster but that poster is designed in such a way that all is revealed is the the hands, the, the costumes, but you don't see, obviously, the person. And each, every one of the characters are holding an object. And what they've done, they've sent only one or a handful of posters 
to bloggers, YouTubers, and podcasters. So nobody had all 23, Roger. And yeah. literally the internet just went wild. It's almost like a, it's almost like a, you know, those card collecting um, things that take over schoolyards where people try to collect all the cards in a set, but there's always a couple of the cards that are really, really rare and nobody ever, ever, ever gets them. <laughs> That's they right, do get them. You know, they're really, really, you know, they can barter with them. But I mean, again, such a great idea. Uh, again, to raise interest, to raise speculation. But again, the genius of sending out some of them, but not all of them, to the internet, bloggers, YouTubers, and podcasters. The word of mouth that that will create, the speculation videos, the analysis video. I mean, there, were, there, were, there are people on YouTube spending hours just going into one of these posters talking about the color of the apple and the fact that that person's fingernails are dirty you know they, they're they going into it with that level of geekiness detail but what a great way of creating even more anticipation and speculation absolutely and there was definitely one poster when, when i say poster by the way roger i'm sure to agree they are you know works of art i would happily no. have that framed in my house yeah, absolutely right. And and this this one that everyone's talking about with the the uh, steel gloved hand with the spikes on the knuckles holding a sword. Are we are we saying that that's Sauron? Or is it an Asgul? Yeah. So that's essentially the, the debate. Yeah. Is it an Asgul or is it Sauron? And we don't know because um, the production team has not confirmed. So. No. I say this is part one because we're going to come back to it. But what they did then a few days later on the 7th of February 2022, sorry, there was a 10 seconds teaser animation of the text with the following phrase, the teaser trailer will arrive precisely when it means to. <laughs> <laughs> Now, of course, if you're not seen Lord of the Rings, uh, this will escape you. But this is a phrase, uh, you know, from Gandalf when it arrives, in um, you know, to meet Frodo, Bilbo, and the birthday party. Absolutely right. But again, it's it's all creating that anticipation, and it's yeah. within the mythos of the show. That's why I love it so much. We move then suddenly, much to a really surprise, from the online world to the print world because on the 10th of mm -hmm. February, three days after announcing that there is a teaser trailer that will arrive precisely when it means to, there is the Vanity Fair interview, which again mm -hmm. um, was like wildfire on the internet because within this interview we had a first exclusive look of scenes you know, from the movie. And again, what a stunning photography. And the producers and showrunners were revealing just a bit more, but not enough to really um, spoil anything in terms of their approach, what the, the challenges and so on. But also by that time, between the posters, the AMDBs and the interviews, we know that we're going to have um, characters like Galadriel, Elrond and a few others that are going to be probably quite grounding for the fans and the casual viewer. Yeah, and, and I guess after all of those poster images where we all we got to see was the clothes and the hands, you know, a little bit of relief that we can actually see the face of one of the characters. We have to wait one week from the little teaser post for the 14th of February when the teaser trailer is released at the same time around the world in different languages, which again, uh, I was very impressed. You know, there was a French version, a Spanish version, there was all sorts of versions. And for viewers and listeners, Roger and I and all our friends went completely mad to talk about it for <laughs> our entire day. Um, that's how you produce and cut a teaser trailer, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And of course, funnily enough, it was shown during the Super Bowl as well, wasn't it? Uh, which which is a nod back to a few weeks ago when I was talking about all the TV advertise, uh, adverts that were shown at Super Bowl this year. Yeah, so the trailer was shown at Super Bowl, they were shown worldwide. They also organised a watch party live with the OneRing.net, which is the number one fan-based um, website. I mean, they, they launched yeah. uh, at the time of Lord of the Rings, you know, 20 years ago, bless them. Uh, it's extraordinary that they managed to, A, secure the trust and, and belief that Prime Video could partner with them, I don't think I've seen before a brand like Prime Stroke Amazon partner with essentially a um, fan base uh, initiative run by volunteers before. But I think that they obviously know that with a series like this, which has such, you know, the, 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 
the brand of Lord of the Rings, Tolkien, Hobbits, that sort of thing, has such a massive following. I mean, it must be as big a following as Star Wars has and Marvel, if not bigger, amongst all age groups. The 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 obvious way is to tap into that almost fanatical fan base and use them to promote what's what's to come. What is interesting then, soon after, we move into part two of the character posters campaign. Now, why am I saying this? Because I think there's something really clever they've done, or very thought, which is not leaving people not knowing for too long. So they release the posters as they've done, you know, bit by bit. But very, very soon they start to confirm or not what the characters' names are and the actors mm -hmm. associated with them. So they, mm. particularly on Instagram, they've done so, where now if you go back to a post that was published a month ago, you will see that Amazon Prime have edited the post to add the name. So there's one I've taken randomly where we now know that a character called Branin would be played by Nazanin Bionadi. And mm. you still, so what we are seeing now is maybe every other day, Every so often, they're releasing the information. I'm guessing they're going to leave it till the very, very last in terms of that character. Is it Sauron? Is it an Asgore? Mm -hmm. Just to keep the anticipation mm -hmm. going. But I just like the idea that, you know, the fans, there's a bit of a game going on and people know and we kind of have fun with it. But we talked a moment ago about the live watch party. It didn't just mm. stop there. So what people uh, did and Prime Video did was people who watched the teaser trailer could send their reaction video. You mentioned that they are very, very popular nowadays. And this was actually edited together and released on the internet. So now you had reactions to the reaction videos um, <laughs> sponsored literally by Prime Video and the wandering.net. Absolutely right. I mean, and again, I, I mentioned reaction videos before when I was talking about Live Aid, but again, it's that raw, the raw power of seeing real people like us reacting to this stuff. I mean, you know, some of it, people are crying, uh, <laughs> tears of joy, presumably, as opposed to tears of sadness. But, you know, it, it really is creating such a mass of emotion. Now, we mentioned that the very first post on Twitter was on the 13th of February, 2019. You mm -hmm. mentioned that if you think about it, people, that's, you know, kind of um, three years ago. And the very last post on the 16th of February, 2022, is actually something that we should do more often, which is celebrate the success. And mm -hmm. you have a simple image, which is, I think, the last scene from the teaser trailer, which reads... 257 million views worldwide in 24 hours. And interestingly, Roger, since then, nothing. <laughs> they really are keeping us on the edge of our <laughs> seats, aren't they? I mean, they've already created so much speculation and anticipation, and we've still got another six months to go before this series hits the screens. And I just can't wait to see what else they've got to come as part of the marketing campaign before we even get to seeing the series itself. Absolutely. So listen, uh, for everyone, thank you so much for allowing us to do something a bit different, which is to react and review a marketing campaign that has just begun, although granted it has been going on for three years, but I think the last few months are really what seems to count. And what I suggest we do is we revisit Middle Earth and the Rings of Power in September after the release of episode one that we know is called shadow of the past shadow of the past fantastic pascal yeah i really enjoyed doing that because again we, we're demonstrating how we're being caught up by the actual marketing excitement ourselves we're actually living through it whereas a lot of the time we're reviewing marketing campaigns of films that have already been released sometimes you know many many years in the past so i've really enjoyed that different approach to this particular campaign so everyone thank you so much once again for listening or watching two geeks and a marketing the podcast pascal and i really do appreciate you taking the time to watching or listening to the show until the next episode please go out there and make sure that your marketing is done right i was roger edwards and he was pascal fintoni Music.